Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have a book review of the book Quest for Planet X, um, one of the middle grade books in the High Republic series by Tessa Grattan. Now, I have um, uh, read all the adult middle grade and YA novels for the High Republic so far, and so to give my very brief thoughts before I get into this book, uh, I thought phase one was overall a very good phase, but I thought that it wasn't as tight as it should be. It was a little bit all over the place. It was too big, too expansive, all that kind of stuff. And I thought that the adult books were pretty much unanimously great. The young adult books were not that great, and then middle grade fluctuated. But I thought that the phase two has been much more cohesive, much more well-planned, much more connected in the ways that you want, and much more easy to understand. And so I've been really enjoying Phase 2, and I cannot wait for Phase 3, which comes out at, towards, starting at the end of the year. And to give my thoughts specifically on the middle-grade novels in The High Republic so far, I thought A Test of Courage by Justina Ireland was a pretty good book. I thought that the book Race to Crash Point Tower was a very forgettable book, unfortunately, one of the weakest higher public novels. I thought that Mission to Disaster was the best middle grade book, an amazing middle grade book, really changed my perspective on Justina Ireland as an author, and made me appreciate A Test of Courage even more. So these kind of go hand in hand in that way. And so that's, those are my thoughts on phase one middle grade. And then we've had two middle grade in the phase two. We have Quest for the Hidden City, which I have a book review for. Um, uh, check my, my videos for that. Just search Quest for the Hidden City book review, and then my name, Jonathan Cohn, and you'll see the review. And I really enjoyed this book. It was a lot of fun. Didn't have the impact or the heart that these books had, but still a really enjoyable book overall. And this book... Uh, the new second book, Quest for the Planet X, follows up a lot of the plot lines of Quest for the Hidden City. So I'm actually, I have a very mixed opinion of Quest for the Planet X. So the first problem with this book is in the premise of this book, our characters are trying to find this hidden planet that has importance to the Jedi. It's going to have importance to the, to the, um, uh, to the, 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 path of the open hand, and it's going to have uh, significance to the traders and the, the prospectors, the business type people on this kind of a, a wild chase, which I did like the idea of there being a wild chase. I think the, the chase for this story should have happened in the adult novels. I think it would have been better told there because um, it needed more time, needed more information, needed more nuance to it. It was much too, much too simple in this book. But that's the basic premise of the book. And uh, you have the two characters from the previous book. You have Rupert Natani, the Jedi apprentice, and then you also have the kid Das Lovebrook. And the two of them team up with a third person named Sky Graf, and the three of them go on this adventure to try to find Planet X, hence Quest for Planet X. And... That in itself is a good premise. But the problem with this book is that it doesn't live up to the premise. For one thing, this book ends very much like it begins, and it doesn't have enough of a satisfying payoff. When you're doing a payoff for a book, either the plot needs this major plot development that's been paid off, or there's a significant character development to characters you really emotionally are connected to, or there needs to be a grander story as something larger in the higher public. Um, uh, when it comes to the grander story of the higher public, I think you could largely ignore this book, and it's not going to affect um, uh, the. It's not going to affect the larger story. So that's the problem. Then think about the plot of this book. The plot of this book is not properly paid off. So that's a problem. Then the third problem is that you have to be emotionally connected to your characters if that's going to be your only real payoff. You really need to feel for your characters. And unfortunately, I did not feel that much for these characters because they haven't had as much time to grow. And also, I feel like they did a better job with the characters in Quest for the Hidden City. Now, when you read about uh, uh, the characters in here, there's also the, um, uh, the kind of aliens that are a part of the uh, Path of the Open Hand, which were kind of interesting, and uh, they play a big part in this, and uh, the whole prospecting, trying to find this, this pathway. And there are 
decisions that characters make in this book that are really, really not smart. And I hate using this word, but there are some stupid decisions made in this book. And you might say, but Jonathan, they're just kids. Kids are going to make mistakes. Yes, but these are mistakes that these kids should have seen. For example, at one point, um, uh, after a chase sequence, uh, the character Sky realizes that there's this, um, uh, this code that the, the other people were using to track the, the team. But Sky knew that the code existed. So that's... And Sky did nothing about it. So that was a problem. And then also, the way that they describe of how the Jedi interact just doesn't feel like it meshes with the way Jedi are described as interacting with each other in other High Republic novels and then also in the greater Star Wars mythos. And so it just didn't feel like it connected with the Jedi as quite as much. And then also, the, the problem is... That, as I said, there's there's promises and payoffs. There are implicit promises in this book made towards the beginning that really aren't paid off. The things that are paid off are things that I didn't need paid off. I could have left those hanging. I didn't need to know those. But the things that aren't paid off, like, it's like, come on, like, that we needed to know this. And maybe they're saving a little bit for the final phase two novel, which is the Kevin Scott young adult novel, Path of Vengeance, but I don't believe that follows any of the same characters, and so it's not going to follow the proper payoff there. So I doubt, I think this is the end of the arc for these characters, and quite possibly the end of the arc for these, this story. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. So there's that. Uh, that was the issue. But let me talk about some positives because I do have some good positives. One positive is if you're a higher public fan, you're going to love this book simply because it connects so much to the other higher public books. Uh, I would say that the way that a, a test of courage, a mission to disaster connected because a test of courage references the major events of the other um, uh, higher public universe, particularly Light of the Jedi. Um, and a, a mission to disaster does a lot of payoffs to those stories and also makes reference to a lot of the characters and plot lines. Race to Crash Point Tower literally takes place during one of the adult novels and kind of interweaves with the adult novel. One of the sequences in the book is the same sequence told from a new perspective, uh, which I didn't actually love that much. This book does essentially the same thing. This book interweaves with... Um, uh, cataclysm quite a bit and so i would you read cataclysm and then you read this book and you're like i see how you're connected so i actually think that they're 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 quite well connected in that in that sense and so you feel a lot of payoffs of connections to other things and as a big easter egg guy i appreciate that um uh, but are easter eggs alone enough to warrant the payoff of a full novel and this is you know a hardcover it's 15 dollars to buy this book which is what i spent on it um, uh, plus tax. That's a, that's a, that's a major payoff that you need uh, for for the financial value. And some people might read this book a little slower. I read this book really quickly. So if I'm gonna have a quick read like this, there needs to be significant payoff. And it just doesn't feel like it's there. It doesn't feel like they could have done without this book and done something else. Now, had they done, if they had a third middle grade book planned, which continued the story, I'd feel okay about this book not perfectly paying everything off it's supposed to. But there is no third middle grade book. So it feels like this book set up some cool things, had a great plot line. The intricacy of the plot, this is the most complex middle grade plot of all of them, which I applaud so much. This is a much simpler plot, a much simpler plot, which is fine, but at least this one pays off what it promises. This one doesn't, and this unfortunately sours me a little bit on Quest for the Hidden City because it doesn't beyond this go anywhere, which is kind of disappointing. But still, like I, I don't think this is a terrible book. It's not an awful book by no means, but it's not an amazing book. It's a very middling book. I give it a very similar feeling to Grace to Crash Point Tower. This is a forgetful book. I forgot a lot of the sequences in this book. And to be honest, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to forget a lot of the sequences in Quest for the Planet X. Why? Just because they don't feel memorable. Whereas, I remember the complexity of the plot of Quest for the Hint City, and it's been several months, and it's been 
literally years since I read A Test for Courage and over a year since I read Mission Disaster. And I will not forget these plots because they were amazing and the characters were amazing and all that stuff. So that's why I feel that way about Quest for the... Why I feel that way about Quest for Planet X. Um, uh, if, you're, if, you're in, if you're reading every single Higher Public project, read it. You'll probably have a lot of fun. If you're not, focus on the adult novels and maybe even the YA, even though I don't love the YA as much as the adult. Focus on those. Those are much more important to the story. And then this will come. This, this, this isn't really necessary. So I'm sorry to give it that kind of a middling review. I gave it like a 5 out of 10. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. It really feels right down the middle. Like, I don't feel positive, I don't feel negative. It's just ugh, forgetful. So that's my uh, review of Quest for Planet X. If you've read this book, what were your impressions of it? Did you like it? Did you see that it hit the New York Times bestseller list? Despite the fact that I didn't love the book, I'm happy it hit the New York Times bestseller list because I want Star Wars books to be successful and continue because I want more Star Wars books. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.